The real one. And she's right, of course. They only asked me because of the TV show. I'm a gimmick. I don't know why I said yes. Oh, Schmucky, oh, we are talking about Hamlet. <gasps> Wouldn't it be great if we could, like, go back in time and tell Barrymore? Why? Well, he was the greatest Hamlet ever. Isn't that what people say? That is true. And Andrew, you know, he lived here for many years, perhaps when he played Hamlet. And now you're here. I bet this is all happening for a reason. Cause you were canceled. <laughs> I get this feeling sometimes in special apartments about the people who live there.
right, John Barrymore from the movies. Okay, okay, hold up. She needs to know what you want to ask Barrymore. What's your question? Andrew, ask. Ask him what? Ask him about my family. Ask him for advice. But I don't want advice. And I don't want to play Hamlet. I mean, I don't think I do. I mean, I hate Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, swear not, 
by the moon, the inconstant moon, <laughs> that monthly changes in her circled orb, <laughs> lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. My heart, dear love. Yeah? Will you stay? Uh, yes. Yeah? Upstairs. Oh. Isn't there an extra room on the roof? Deirdre. Andrew, you said you understood. I can only give myself to the man I'll love forever. The man I'll marry. So marry me. <laughs> That's so sweet. Why won't you take me seriously? I'm not just talking about sex. You believe in things, and you almost make me believe. You are Juliet. Exactly, and you'll be Hamlet. I can see it. <laughs> Andrew, I do want to get married, and I do want to have sex. It's just, I've waited so long. I mean, I have so much invested in this. If it wasn't absolutely perfect, it'd all just be wasted. I'd feel so silly. Deirdre, you're a 29-year-old virgin. <laughs> you tell everyone. I think fear of silliness is not the issue. But won't it be wonderful? Once I know for sure, won't you be glad you waited? Deirdre, sex is wonderful. It's right up there with unicorns and potpourri <laughs> and antique lace and bayberry scented candles. Deirdre, even Martha Stewart had sex. <laughs> That's true. When will you know? When will you be sure? Soon. Yeah? Maybe. Oh. I know I'm being impossible, but it's not that I'm a prude, it's just I want everything, and it's happening. It is? Yes. You're going to be Hamlet, and I... <gasps> I'm going to be Ophelia! Oh, Andrew, could I audition? Would they let me? Uh, I guess I can ask them. And it wouldn't be sleazy, because, because I'm not sleeping with you. Isn't that perfect? Deirdre, that's nuts. It's like show business for Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Truly frightened. 
I'm not afraid of you. Shall I call it your flesh too quick? Couldn't possibly. Shall I scare you beyond all human imagination? Go ahead and try. In six weeks' time, you will play Hamlet. Ah! <laughs> oh my God! You, you really are him, aren't you? John Barrymore, actor, legend, seducer, corpse. <laughs> so, so it worked. The seance. Felicia. Her mother brought you back from over there? Not at all. You summoned me. I did? As a link in a proud theatrical tradition. Every soul embarking upon Hamlet is allowed to call upon a previous player. From Burbage to Keene to Irving, the call has been answered. So you're here to help me play Hamlet because you did? Indeed. Well, then the problem's solved because I'm not going to play Hamlet. No way. So you can just go back to wherever. I'm afraid that's not possible. Then why not? I may not return. I will not be accepted until your task is accomplished. Until you have played Hamlet. No. Precisely. No, so you mean if I don't go through with it, then... Then I am here to stay. Trapped for all time within these walls with a television actor. Well, excuse me. I happen to be a very good television actor. And even if I were going to go through with it, I wouldn't need any help from some dead hambone like you. I can do just fine all by myself. Very well, then. Hamlet. To be or not to be? Huh. That happens to be the speech I did at my auditions. And I got the part. What? Proceed. God help me. 
I live just long enough to see the introduction of truth into the modern theater. If I remember correctly, it accompanied synthetic fibers in the GE kitchen of tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so you just want me to ham it up a bit. I beg your pardon. You know, hamming, mugging, over the top, too big, too many more. Well, you did have that reputation as being someone larger than life. And what size would you prefer? <sighs> Gesture, passion, these are an actor's tools. Abandon them, and the result, <clears throat> mere reality. Employ them with gusto and an artist's finesse, and the theater resounds. I do not overact. <laughs> I simply possess the emotional resources of ten men. <laughs> I am not a ham. I am a crowd. Andrew, who is Hatton? A prince. A star. What? A star. The role is a challenge, but far more an opportunity to shine, to rule, to seduce, to wit. What makes a star? Tell. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> a thrilling vocal range. Decades of training. The proper vehicle. Tights. <laughs> Tights? Tights. Where are you looking right now? I am not. <laughs> of course you are. The potato. The cucumber. The rolled sock. This is the history of Prince Hamlet. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> Even for the balcony. <laughs> the second balcony. But should Hamlet be so horny? <laughs> Hamlet is a young man, a college student. He is pure homo. Ophelia enters, that most beguiling of maidens. Chastity is discussed. Please, don't joke. Not about chastity. Why? What? No, it's nothing. Oh dear. A problem? Your beloved? A nightmare. Five months. What? Necking at the cloisters. Picnics on Amish quilts. Sonnets. Not sonnets. Yes. <laughs> and I've been faithful. Totally. Do you know what it's like to not have sex? No. Thanks. <laughs> but why? Why her or why me? Deirdre won't have sex because she's the victim of a relentlessly happy childhood, which she fully expects to continue. <laughs> and you? Me? Why do I put up with all this? Why have I begged Deirdre to marry me practically since the day we met? Because, in the strangest way, Deirdre is the most romantic person I've ever met. Because when she sees a homeless person down in the street, she gives them a fabric-covered date book. <laughs> she's hopelessly a romantic, which means she's insane. And I know I love her because I want to strangle her. Does that make any sense? Of course. A virgin goddess. Please, don't encourage her. She is to be treasured and honored. I have known few such women in my sensual history. Perhaps less than 500. <laughs> they are the most adorable saints. But uh, there are ways. What? No, no, it would be unthinkable. What? Uh, I could never condone such Casanova-like tactics, such Valentino mesmerism, such, such Barrymore deceit. Can? Yes? Nay, please. Hamlet. No, stop with that. Hamlet. In order to expose his father's murder, feigns madness. To perfect the pose, he must spurn his beloved, the fair Ophelia. She is undone. But doesn't she kill herself? I don't want to hurt Deirdre. You'll be merciful. No, that would be dishonest. Uh, you would prefer, perhaps, some form of continued discussion, uh, therapy, oh god, what is the modern day epithet? Uh, communication, that absolute assassin of romance. Deirdre. Andrew? Oh. Andrew, who are you talking about? 
talking to me? I... No, 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 no. She has no need to see me. I was just uh, running my lines, the soliloquies. I've been reading your Barrymore book. He was incredible. You. But it was life. It was so tragic. Did you know he was a major alcoholic? And towards the end, when he couldn't find any liquor, he'd drink cleaning fluid. A black lie. And perfume. As a chaser. <laughs> he was incredible, but he was married four times. I was. He'd fall madly in love with these women, and then he'd become insanely jealous, and then he'd cheat on them. <gasps> oh, Andrew, I want you to promise me something. I know Barrymore is your hero and that we should all worship him, but please, promise me you'll never be anything like him. Oh, swear it! Uh, Deirdre, maybe Barrymore wasn't so bad. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure he had a few... Sterling attributes? Good days. Oh, no, he was... Well, did you know the first time he had sex, he was only 14? Which book is this? With his own stepmother. <laughs> I'm Freudian bonus coupon. <laughs> After that, there was no stopping him. He must have been with every woman in New, in New York. He was a matinee idol before he did Hamlet. He starred in these tragic plays and women. They would just swoon in the aisles. <gasps> there are these pictures of him. He was so cool. Deirdre? <gasps> oh, look at this one. It's him rejecting Ophelia. See how he wears all black? Sort of open at the neck. And tight. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh, I get it. You're treating me the way Hamlet treats Ophelia. Yeah. Do you think Hamlet slept with Ophelia? Only in the Chicago company. Shut up! <laughs> oh, Andrew, Hamlet's so mean to Ophelia. He says, get thee to a nunnery. A nunnery, can you imagine? If you said that to me, I, I'd die. Oh, Andrew, say it, like in the play. Oh, uh, what? Get thee to a nunnery? No, like Barrymore. Barrymore! Begin. Get thee to a nunnery! Yes! Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest. Yes, I can accuse me of such things. Who pause? Consider. Destroy. Then it were better. My mother had not borne me. No! I am very proud, revengeful, with more offenses at my back than I have thought to put them this in. This is making me really nervous. Imagination give them shape, nor time to act them in. What would such fellows as I do, crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Get thee to another day. Follow my machine. No! My Lord Hamlet! Fair me. <laughs> no. No! No, go away! No! <laughs> Poor boy. Within one couplet. Ah, uh, Shakespeare. The most potent aphrodisiac. I was this close. I was going to have sex. It's Derek! Derek? A friend, a producer from L.A. Why is he here? Why? God. You are Hamlet. A study in frustration. Thwarted action. Dee Dee! Derek! Ha! Dee Dee! Derek! Dee Dee! Derek! Dee Dee! Derek! Ha! What are you doing here? I thought you were in L.A. I remember my name. Uh, my name is Rally. Andy boy! Talk time, Andy man. Fusion has occurred. Yes! Oh! Derek! I'll let you guys talk. I'm gonna finish my reading. Might leave. Yeah, to another. <laughs> reading? She's reading? I don't understand it. Whoa. Still no. No! Still no kind of gestures. Whoa. Man, if I was with a lady for that long and there was still no return, I don't know. I might start thinking trade in, turn around. <laughs> And who's this? Of course he can see me. It won't matter. John Barrymore. Oh, right. Uh, Disney. VP? Uh, no, I'm an actor. An actor? <coughs> Whoa. Not another one. Good luck, big guy. 
I mean, see, that's what's great about you guys. You're both actors. You're like in direct competition. And you can still give off the appearance of friendship. See me, I'm all screwed up. I can't be friends with anyone who's like me. Ah, uh, we understand, Pierce. I mean, just the way I monitor. There's only a bundle of space for so many hyphenates, right? Hyphenates? <sighs> Writer, producer, director, Derek Lamont Jameson. Ah, uh, I see. And uh, if you also design the scenery, would you require another name? <laughs> <laughs> cute. <laughs> That's cute. Great, look. What is that? Japanese? <laughs> Watch Silk? Hamlet. Shakespeare. Oh, right. Nice. Retro. 16th century. Whoa, God. Other centuries. Like people who weren't me. <laughs> okay, tell me. Total truth. Am I like the most self-obsessed person that you ever met? My answer? Yes. Okay, enough about me. <laughs> Figure of speech. <laughs> Andy. Andy boy. Andy, my love. We got it. Network approval. A pilot in five episodes. A pilot in five episodes of what? Of the show. Of our show. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. I didn't tell you. Because I didn't want you to be disappointed and blame me if it didn't go. But man, it went. I told the network. It was your all-time favorite project that you were ready to roll. And after Jim Corbin, your network candy. They're crawling. Really? America cries out. Your commitment was just a push. Uh, but he's not committed. He's playing Hamlet. Wait, which network? In the park this summer. What, is it for like something special? Five time? It's not for anything. It's theater. <laughs> Wait, let me get this. It's Shakespeare, right? It's like algebra on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in Central Park, which probably seats, what, 500 tops? And the only merchandising of all, say, mostly Mozart tote bags and Gilgood CDs. <laughs> and on top of that, it's free. So tell me, Andy, who in the hell is representing you nowadays? Lillian's all for it. Oh, Lillian, Jesus, of course. Andy, I love her, but she's a war criminal. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She's a 10-hour documentary waiting to happen. <laughs> OK, 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 fine. Do your little show in the park. I mean, is it a deduction? It's not even dinner theater. What? They sell whole wheat brownies and little bags of nuts and raisins. It's snack theater. It's Shakespeare for squirrels. OK, Andy, just one question. One simple thing. Why? Why are you doing this? Are you broke? No, I have savings. Is there a bed involved? No. And are you in some sort of trouble? Yes. And that's it, Derek. He finally hit it. Shakespeare has my parents! Hey, <laughs> oh. I have to say this, because we're buds. And I cherish that budget. But think reputation. Word on the street. When folks, let's call them Hollywood. When they find out that you're doing the greatest play in the English-speaking world, they're going to know that you're washed up. Derek, <coughs> I'm not kidding. You haven't had any offers? Nothing? What about the commercials? Uh, that Trevor's crap. Have you seen those ads? Have you seen what I have to work with? What? A, a puppet. A furry little chipmunk. It's a hand puppet. <laughs> have you ever worked with the puppet? <laughs> There's some guy kneeling down by your crotch working the puppet. And the guy, the chipmunk operator, he says, Oh, Andy, can I have a Trevor's nugget? And I say, I'm sorry, Trevor's nuggets are for people, not chipmunks. And then he starts to cry. And I, I, you what? I kiss him on top of his little chipmunk head. <laughs> it's great. It's humiliating. It's disgusting. I didn't spend four years in college and join drama school to end up comforting somebody's fist. It's not even a decent product. Trevor's nuggets are like, like sodas dipped in chocolate. And they have more calories than lard. <laughs> and that's what you're doing now? No, Derek. You don't understand about theater, about why people do Shakespeare. They do it because it's art. Andy, Andy, my honey. Andy, my multi-talented, prime time delight. You don't do art. You buy it. 
Kindle TV, or flip. You make a bundle and you nail them on eight. I was at this producer's place in Brentwood over the weekend. Incredible. Picasso's, Van Gogh, a Rembrandt, and all of this from his TV shows. But Derek, I don't want to just buy art. I mean, which would you rather do? Paint a Picasso or own one? Are you kidding? I'd rather sell one. <laughs> I want one. See, that's what I like. Balls in the air. Activity. You're my Rembrandt. I am? Sure. I mean, how much are you going to click from the Shakespeare, though, anyway? Zip, right? Actually, you're paying them because your time is valuable. A pilot of five episodes. Three million. Easy. And if the show hits, you get participation. Participation? In syndication? Yep. You get paid every time it airs. First run. Rerun. 4 a.m. in Singapore. In the year 3000. <sighs> Basically, you'll have enough money to buy England, dig up Shakespeare, and get him to write the Christmas show. <laughs> this uh, television program, this gold mine you're promoting, what is it exactly? Oh, OK. The pitch. Gather you around. It's not cops. It's not young doctors. None of that TV crap. Great. You're Mike Sullivan. Young. You're idealistic. New to the system. Inner city high school. Rough. Dope. M1s. Teen sex. Wow. No one cares. All the other teachers are burnouts, but not you. Uh, why not? Because he cares. Look, you grew up in the neighborhood. You want to give something back. You know, that sort of sounds okay. I mean, we could deal with real problems. <clears throat> I could be vulnerable. I could mess up sometimes. Oh, and that night, you have superpowers. <laughs> superpowers? Sure. I mean, who wants to watch that caring, feeling, unled mother's bullshit? That's over. But at night, you're invincible. Modified x-ray vision. You can fly, but only about 10 feet up. See, we're keeping it real. <laughs> so, after sundown, you help the community. You help the kids with your powers. Do they know it's me when I have my superpowers? No. You're in leather, denim. They just think it's some great dude. Oh, great title. Killer title. Night school. <laughs> <laughs> Dolls. Posters. The clothes. Yeah. You can get an album. Easy. But I can't sing. Someone can. <laughs> and you can keep the Trailburst gig. There's no conflict. They'll probably extend. Because now you're a teacher. So just think. What's the thing? You got a network commitment. Just forget this Hamlet crap. I mean, who are you kidding anyway, Andy? What? Andy. I know you. I gave you your break. You're no actor. Derek, you, you're better than that. An actor, what? That's just some English guy who can't get a series. <laughs> I'm at the Ritz. I'll talk to Lily and get things rolling. What? Great to meet you. Uh, you act, right? Yes, John Sidney Barrymore. Uh, we'll keep you in mind. <laughs> oh, and uh, Barrymore. Any relation to the dead guy? Ah, distant. <laughs> dead. Just think, the third coast. <laughs> oh, don't say it. He's right. He's totally right. Night school. Think about the money. You had that kind of money. Yes. As I grew older, wealth is obscene in the young. It stunts ambition. But, but what about security? What is this mania for security? What's the worst that could happen? that Derek's right, and I play Hamlet, and then no one will hire me, and then I'm face down in the gutter with rags and nowhere to go. Shouldn't every evening end that way? <laughs> Why am I talking to you? And it's not just the money. I'm not that superficial. It's the fame. Do you know how many people will watch Night School, even if it's a bomb? Of course. There is fame in that sort of work. You may be admired, lusted after, you may acquire all of the attributes of a well-marketed detergent. But there is fame, mere celebrity, and there is glory. Do you understand the difference? Of course. Fame pays better. 
Fame has beachfront property. Fame needs bodyguards. Glory? Only an audience. Oh, come on. That audience has changed. What? Don't you think that if Shakespeare were around today, he'd be writing normally? Excuse me. You know, wouldn't the character say, hey, how are you? Instead of, how dost thou my liege? <laughs> what is a liege anyways? And what's a fardo? In to be or not to be, Hamlet's talking about suicide, right? And he's saying the whips and scorns of time. Correct. Well, he says, why should anyone put up with all this when he himself might his quietus make with a bear vodkin? Quietus vodkin? Quietus is death. A vodkin is a dagger. And the next line, who fardels would bear? A fardel is a burden, any burden. So why can't we change it? Why can't we just say, so with all this garbage in the world, why not just kill yourself instead of dragging your fardels around? <laughs> <laughs> then people would get it. It would be clear. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. <clears throat> Tell me, if you loathe Shakespeare so much, if L.A. is so alluring, why did you audition? Because my agent made me. And because Deirdre loves him. Because, well, because they asked me. Because they asked you? Because somewhere someone thought that maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't have to be just Jim Corman for the rest of my life. In L.A., no one cared if I was talented. I had the right twinkle, the demographic appeal. After a while, I started to think, maybe that's all I had, that if I didn't show up, they could just use the poster instead. But then I came to New York and someone said, wait, maybe Andy Rowley could do Shakespeare on stage, say those lines. Ah. Yes, but they're wrong. And I know that now, and it's not a crime. And I'm sorry I got you down here, and I'm sure if you go back and talk to whomever, you can get this whole Hamlet deal canceled. Because I'm very tired, and my girlfriend won't sleep with me, and my agent is very ill, but she refuses to discuss it. And my life is an embarrassing joke. So if you'd please just leave, I'd appreciate it. Can you possibly believe that you are the first performer to experience such misgivings? Can you imagine that every prospective Hamlet did not pale and tremble and bolt? Hamlet will change you, Andrew, make no mistake. And the deal, as you term it, cannot be cancelled. And I may not leave these premises until your destiny is fulfilled. You approach a crossroads, Andrew, and a decision must be made. What are you to be? Actor or lunchbox? Stop it! You are no longer Jim Corbin. Get out! And you are not yet sensitive Mike Sullivan. You don't know that. You are Hamlet. No! Where did that come from? It's not mine. Swords? Oh my god! Whew. I should call the movers. Oh no! What? The drama's conclusion. Hamlet's duel and death. Excuse me, I can't fence. Hamlet can. I can. Stop it! I hate swords. I hate violence. I have an excuse. So does Hamlet. Until the drama's concluding moments, finally he takes action. He assumes a tragic stature. He dies. A hero. This is why one acts. Uh, this is why actors are envy. We are allowed to do this sort of thing. Not anymore. We have some people. Doubles. <laughs> of course. For the soliloquies. Your house. Yes. Yeah. Oh. 
yours. I'll get some more. <laughs> no, not the lamp. Buy a new lamp. Residuals. <laughs> You're making a mess. The girl doesn't come until Friday. Someone's going to back you. Not I. <laughs> Eternal love for the ages and tonight. 
tonight and just playing Hamlet? Oh, no. Uh, hey, lady! I got champagne. Dear Rick, that's bad luck! Champagne's for afterwards, to celebrate. I'll go put it on ice. Oh, sorry. Uh, hey, big night. Hot stuff. I can't wait. You know, I love it. He's a great actor. But what if he really sucks? He won't. He's going to be great. Don't even think that. Well, I hope he's good. Although, you know, with Shakespeare, how can you tell? Exactly. <laughs> Maybe it's foolproof. Maybe with Shakespeare, there's no difference between bad and good. And everyone's afraid to say it. I mean, at the movies, on the tube. You're either funny or you're canceled. <laughs> you're good looking or you're best supporting. I mean, you can tell. But Shakespeare, it's just wrong to tell what's good without nudity. Harry, <laughs> have you ever been to the theater? Yeah. Really? Well, not lately. Can I be frank? I don't get it. The theater. It's like progress, right? Take it step by step. OK, like back in the end of all time. Entertainment was like two rocks. Uh, boom, boom. Uh. <laughs> then in the Middle Ages, they had theater. Then came silent movies. Then radio. Then sound. Then TV. Man, that's like art perfected. When you watch TV, you can eat. You can talk. You really don't have to pay attention. Not if you've seen TV before. Nice, half hour chunks. Or even better, commercials. Hot guy, hot girl, the beer. It's all there. It's the still. I mean, when I go to the theater, I sit there, and most of the time I'm thinking, which one is my armrest? <laughs> The bottle. The best. 
<laughs> and Deirdre. Deirdre? For certain, she shall witness your portrayal. She imagines herself Ophelia. She shall wed you or drown. We have accomplished much. Vocal <coughs> assurance. Physical technique. And, dare I say it, an appreciation of the text. Indeed. Our achievement is twofold. Not only do I revere the play, but for the first time, I have finished it. Welcome, Rallenberg, to the royal order of Hamlet's. The elite. The august. Princes and players. We do not step. We strive. <laughs> we do not speak. We beseech. We whisper. We roar. Brother Hamlet, player king. The time is nigh. I name my rightful heir, Neil Braddy. I hereby dub thee Prince Hamlet of all lower Manhattan. You shall henceforth be known as the greatest American Hamlet of all time. Of your generation. <laughs> of what generation? And why not? Well, just, I keep thinking, tonight. Of course. The performance, minutes from now. I'm fine. I'm fine. <coughs> Hamlet. Hamlet. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Glory. Glory. Blind, unspeakable terror. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> of course you're trembling. And for the noblest of reasons. The moment, the role, the test. Come with me. Be there. I cannot. You know that. Well, then there must be something, some ancient secret of the Hamlet, something you've been saving. Of course. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had as lief the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air with your hand too much, thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget it a temperance that may give it smoothness. Be not too tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. With this special observance, suit the word to the action, the action to the word, but do not o'erstep the modesty of nature. For anything so or done is from the purpose of play, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as to were, the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the time, his form and pressure. Now, this or done, or come tardy off, though it make the unskillful laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve. Go, make you ready. I can't. Go. Make you ready. It's all there, in the text, at your service. I can't do that. What you just did, I... Who do I think I am? Andrew, your fear has a history. My opening night, good lord. But you were Barrymore. <laughs> Barrymore? I was a light comedian, attempting Olympus. There was a family reputation knotted about my neck. Before the curtain rose, I sat there on that stage in darkness, paralyzed with fear. But you weren't some TV clown. You were still doing theater. Oh, don't overestimate the form. Would you like the titles of some of my boulevard triumphs? The Fortune Hunter, Claire de Lune, Princess Zim Zim. <laughs> what if Derek's right? What if the critics hate me? Ah, newspapers. What if I hate me? You have prepared for this evening. When you played Hamlet, you prepared for six months in the country, just learning the role. You have been diligent. Sure, but six weeks? And tonight, people are going to be there. My friends, my family. People who saw me in my second grade school play and who might expect improvement. <laughs> and, dear, she'll adore you. 
It's not automatic. Jared wants him to be a hero, an immortal. What if I fail her? Impossible. Up until now, I've been plugging away, trying to be Hamlet, trying to be you. Andrew, this is not your first opening night. Your fear, your doubt, this is all to be expected. No, this is something else. What? Common sense. I had this idea that I could come back to New York, that I could prove some ridiculous point. To myself, to everybody. Instant after, just to add Shakespeare. But I don't think it works that way. And why not? Because tonight, I'm going to be on stage with real actors. People who know what they're doing. Jesus, why did I listen to you? I could be in LA right now making a fortune in pants. <laughs> Is that what you like? Is that what I taught you? That's what I know. Enough. You unbearable brat! Your sniveling is a disgrace. The words of Shakespeare, be worthy. The role of Hamlet, be grateful. Oh, come off it! Excuse me? Listen to yourself. What? After you played Hamlet, you left the theater. Unimportant. I read about it. After 101 performances, you ran right to Hollywood. For a time. For the rest of your life. That is my affair. You lived in a mansion in Beverly Hills with a yacht and a screening room. How many wives? Quite a few. <laughs> you made movie after movie. Some of them classics. Most of them garbage. Yes. And after a while, I even had trouble with those. There was this time on the set where the, the cameras rolled and I couldn't remember a line. Take after take, nothing, just haze, and then terror. And I wasn't drunk, no, stone sober. And everyone was more than kind. Words were scribbled on shirt sleeves and on cardboards held just out of camera range, but and I knew. I knew it instantly. Never go back on the stage. John Barrymore, the great classical actor, example to us all. The unemployable lush, the public embarrassment, the off color joke. Yes, I ran to Hollywood, and you cannot imagine the life that I led. I was a movie star. Do you know what that means? My face, five stories high and six zeros wide. But in my pride, I faced the dragon. I accepted a role so insanely complex, so fantastic and impossible that any attempt is only that, an attempt. And I stood in the light, facing a crowd fully prepared to dismiss, to deride, and to depart, and I shook them. I wooed them. And I said, yes, you will stay. And yes, you will remember. And for one glorious moment, I used all that I had every shred of talent, every ounce of gold. I was John Benning. In all those sacred evenings, there was no shame. I played Hamlet. Have you? Yes? Yes, I'll be there.
Lillian, are you coming? I will catch up in the cab. Oh. Lillian, I have to go through with this, don't I? No, you can't stay here and cancel the production. I'd be so proud. Go! <laughs> Yes, I see you, you swine. But how? I am very old. I see everything. <laughs> and it so happens I know you. You do? Oh, I knew you'd not remember. Could it be? What? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Is it you? I was very young. A young wife of a conductor. A violinist. A violinist, yes, sir. With a mistress. Bravo. I was in town promoting a film. It was a cocktail party. Your husband was to meet you. He did not. Do not be smug. You were married as well uh, to an actress. To an actress? Is that legal? <laughs> I found you sobbing in a coat room. I did not sob. Out of anger, we came here. Out of a madness, a temporary insanity. We had a fire. And a candlelight. Champagne, huh? And bought chocolate bars from the five and dime. We broke every commandment. We made love. And gained weight. You were impossible. You were very more. What? No. Uh, what is the matter? You are you're far too kind. And I am undeserving. Mm. I have failed utterly. I, I returned for a single purpose, and now... What? What is your purpose? That Andrew should play Hamlet. So it is done. There was more. So much more. I wanted him to learn. To learn what? For all that he accuses me of. For my sorry excuse for a life. I was offered the planet, every conceivable opportunity. Andrew is my last vain hope, my cosmic lunge at redemption. Tell me, Barrymore, when did it happen? What? When did you turn a scoutmaster? <laughs> Excuse me. Rally is a big boy. You have pushed him, as have I. He needed that, but tonight must be his, and his alone. So why do you sing? What do you want? I am like anyone else. I have come to see Barrymore. A sideshow. A three-ring circus. A true oddity. A, a movie star, and... A Danish prince, a womanizer, but never a beast. A drunkard, but at least until recently, never a bore. Tonight, I had hoped for one last encounter, an encore. But it was long ago. Perhaps I remember incorrectly. I will go. Lillian. Yes? Will you be all right, Andrew? Oh, who can say? Have I helped him in any way? Ask him when he returns. Any more questions? Just one. Your uh, husband, is he well? I hope not. Mm -hmm. We are divorced. You were named in a lawsuit. <laughs> Divorced, uh, <coughs> one last encounter. I am the 
are for people, not chipmunks. <laughs> oh, all right. But remember, Trailburst Nuggets are a delicious breakfast treat and an anytime snack. Yeah, 
Come on up. It's Derek. Derek? That cloud of Malibu ozone? <laughs> that cultural cavity? Oh, night school. Is that what you're doing? I guess we'll find out. <coughs> well, here's to you, Admiral. Here's to all of the money you can make and all of the pride you can swallow. Here's to, to challenge and risk and, and the worst possible role models. Care to join me? It's excellent wine. After all, you can afford it, lucky dog. Hey, Helen! <laughs> Big guy, where were you last night? You missed it. Look what I got. The papers. Oh, did you already see it? No. Well, let's have a look. Are you curious? What is it about someone who brings in the newspapers with glee? Shouldn't you be hooded? <laughs> <laughs> No, wait, let me. A not uninteresting attempt, far to go. If Mr. Raleigh is to seriously consider a career on the boards, blah, 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 find supporting cast. The DVD, remember, it's free. Hey, not bad. <laughs> you left out TV lightweight. But that's not so terrible, huh? Could have been worse. Personally, I thought you were great. Like I can tell. Derek. <sighs> Andy, I warned you. I said, Andy, it's not for you. But hey, you learned, right? In front of all those people, shuffling all those feet. I was there. I know, I know. Anyway, back to reality. I wanted to talk to you before I took off, so I can call the network. So all systems go, start reproduction. Wait, I know you're going to say yes. It's all set. Well, let me pause the part. Tickle the treats. Derek, cut it. What's the offer? The money. It was a beating frenzy. 24 episodes, guaranteed 10 million. 10 million dollars? Even if it's a dud, one year and out. It's enough to breathe, to lay back. A house, houses, cars. No, for your folks, for all they've done. Or if you hate them, rub them out. <laughs> the money's there. And if the show hits, okay, you're tied up for a few years. But triple it, quadruple it, keep going. Picture, one day you wake up, and whatever happens, you're rich. Something goes wrong, something breaks. It's not gonna be so bad. It's never gonna be so bad. Why? You're rich. It's like they say, the rich, they're different from you and me. They're, they're rich. <laughs> And on the other hand, and I'm just blowing smoke here, let's pretend you say no. Pretend you stick around here, the theater, L Footlights, and in a few years, here you are. No offense, but another out of work actor. Not so young, not so network. Maybe you wait tables. Uh -huh. oh, sorry, Major D. Pretty soon you won't. <laughs> Because you can't afford this place. But hey, once in a while, you get work. Off, off nowhere. It's Chekhov. It's a basement. And there's folding chairs, Andy. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just doing my job as a bud. Ten million dollars? Plus all expenses and personal staff. Folding chairs, Andy. And you fold them up. After every show, <laughs> AA needs the hall. So, Andy boy, are we on? Am I in? <laughs> A network commitment. Full season. Ten million dollars. No tights. <laughs> no. No? No? No. No, what? No, you still don't like the figures? No, you're not happy with the time slot? No, just no. Wait, you don't get it. In LA, there is no no. <clears throat> like, yes means sure, unless I get a better offer. And no means yes, with more money. No, this is a New York no. A surgical no. 
a vinyl terminal known. Oh, a maybe. <laughs> no, Derek, it's a no, as in, Derek, would you be interested in doing a documentary on acid rain for PBS? Talk to him. Talk sense. No. No. <laughs> But think about tomorrow, the next day, when the bills start coming in, when you're flying coach. I'm sorry. And think about me. Think about the money I can make on this. Oh, don't be selfish. Ha, Pidgey at He's begging. <laughs> you, this is your fault. You made him do that hell of crap. Me? I, I wasn't even at the show. I, I, I was at home all night watching television, like a good American. Jesus. <laughs> What happened here? Andy, what am I gonna tell the network? Tell them, who needs Andy Rally? Dime a dozen. Hey, that's good. That's great. Who can I get? Ten million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when would you need me? Derek. Oh, babe, in the car. We're gonna miss the plane. Felicia. Hi, Dan. Hey, hey I gotta make some calls. Damage control. In the kitchen. Han, what can I say? Last night were you terrific or what? I mean, the part I saw. The part you saw? Yeah, well, I saw the first act where you were all confused, but then at intermission I got thirsty and, well, Derek has a bar in his limo and... I'm sorry, Andy, one thing led to another. Wait, the two of you? Oh, perfection! Yeah, <laughs> and all thanks to you and Shakespeare. <laughs> So you only saw one act, both of you. I'm sorry, Andy. So how did it end? You're king now, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Felicia, are you going away with Derek? Yeah, to LA. Long weekend. <sighs> this place is great, I told you. I only wish we could have contacted Barry more. But you know what? I've been thinking a lot lately, and maybe ghosts don't really exist. Even Mom. Maybe it's all in my head. No afterlife, no other side, nothing. Who knows? We got split. But Andy, this isn't over. I'm coming back. And if I have to tie you up, drug you, and slam you into a cage, you're making money. Aren't you flying somewhere? We'll call you. Uh, from the plane, buddy. And Andy, this theater thing, we'll beat it together. <laughs> <laughs> Deirdre? Deirdre, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Deirdre, I hope you went to the party last night. Did you have a good time? Mm. Deirdre? Hi. Hi. Mm. Stop that. Stop what? Stop moaning. Deirdre, did you go to the party last night? No. Perhaps I should just leave you two alone for a moment. Uh, no, stay. Of course I'll stay. Oh, Andrew, last night you were so wonderful. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Dear Drum, I'm not what you want. You're waiting for someone legendary, a hero, a Lancelot or Mark Antony. And you should. Dear Drum, I wish I'd been good. I wish I'd been everything for you. I'm sorry. Andrew. I watched you on stage last night, and I thought, he's worked so hard. He's put his heart and soul into this, and at least partly for me, and he's so bad. And I thought I'd be demolished, but something happened. I mean, people were coughing, and a plane it just blew overhead, and all those mosquitoes. Right in my mouth. And you kept going. And I thought, what makes a hero? It's just someone who tries to do what's right despite impossible odds. Like you play Hamlet. You're the bravest, noblest man I've ever met. I am? Yes. And then I thought about how I put you off and how I was just a lady in waiting, and I thought, I'm not worthy. Dear girl. So you know what I decided to do? Something sensible? Exactly. I decided to drown myself like Ophelia in Central Park Lake. <laughs> Isn't that perfect? No. So. I ran behind the theater, and I stood on a rock, and I braided wild flowers into my hair, 
and I sang Ophelia's body song. Hey, naughty, naughty. Hey, naughty. I couldn't do it. I'm glad. And I was so upset that I came back here and I ran to the rope and I stood at the edge and I gazed up at the moon and I said, Oh, Mr. Moon, you're so big and brown and yellow. Deirdre. I don't know. Please, I thought, Deirdre, maybe everyone's right. Get some help. And that's when I felt it. Felt what? This breeze on the back of my neck. Only it wasn't a breeze, it was a hand. A hand? A caress. No. Yes. No. And <laughs> that's all I remember, except I woke up this morning in the room upstairs, and there was a rose lying on my pillow. A red rose. A red rose? For passion. And my copy of Romeo and Juliet was lying open to one of Juliet's speeches. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give, the more I have, for both are infinite. And all I could think about was to you. Andrew, I'm worthy. Get thee right now. I wish I could kill you. You, you, me? Yes, she was suicidal. She felt unworthy of you. What did you do? Andrew, I'm a ghost, a spirit. Of Barrymore. How dare you? Swear it. Nothing happened between you and Deirdre. Please, you, you wouldn't understand. It was, it was a moment of Shakespeare. A purely poetic communion between two lyric souls as assisted by moonlight. A Midsummer Night's Dream. Much to do about nothing? As you like it. So all's well with it. Yes. Although I'm utterly perplexed. Ten million dollars in your precious LA. Why not go? Do you know what stopped me? Of all things? Hamlet. But you were awful. Everyone said so. I deal drum in newspapers. I heard. And that's part of it. Last night, right from the start, I knew I was bombing. I sounded real phony, real thee and thou. And then I started rushing it. Hi, what's new in Denmark? I just could not get a hold of it. And then I just kept feeling worse and worse. And I looked out, and there's this kid in the second row, dragged there. And he's reading his program and yawning and shuffling his feet, and I just wanted to say, hey kid, I'm with you. I can't stand this either. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. So I just kept feeling worse and worse, just drowning. And I thought, okay, all my questions are answered. I'm no Hamlet. I'm no actor. What am I doing here? And then I got to the big job, the soliloquy. And I'm right in the headlines. And I just thought, Christ, the hell with it. Just do it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. And I got to the end, and I looked out, and there's that kid, and he's listening. The whole audience, complete silence, total focus. I had it. I was Hamlet. And it lasted about ten more seconds. And then I was right back to hell. <laughs> and I stayed there. But for that one moment, for that one bit, I had it. Hamlet! And only 8,000 lines left to go. <laughs> there it is. The glory of Shakespeare. <laughs> Hamlet has changed you, altered your course. Yes, and I love this apartment because it's like a stage set. It's, it's the theater. And because once upon a time, you lived here. Brother Hamlet, play a king. Uh, stay, teach me. You have already learned all that is important. You've tasted glory. Now, reach skyward. Surprise everyone. 
And Andrew, this I promise you, someday, someday, you will perform indoors. <laughs> <laughs> I must take my leave. You have a performance tonight and uh, a matinee. Get out of here. I'm on my way, but um, I was unable to witness your performance. So now I must see your bow. My bow. As I expected. <laughs> what? It, it was perfunctory. A bow should be theater incarnate. <laughs> oh, very well. Begin in a daze, still lost in the drama. <laughs> <laughs> My children, <laughs> and the poor, <laughs> the company, don't spoil them. And the grand finale, your humble servant. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, I love you. I love you all, especially the deaf. <laughs>